Here we have a 1998 23-foot Mako that's in dire need of a fuel tank. And this is also a 1998 21-foot Parker that has found itself in the same situation. Both boats are in great shape with a really desirable hull, a good working engine, and everything else in the boat in pretty good condition. So does a bad fuel tank make these boats junk? Well, let's show you exactly what it is going to take to replace these tanks as well as what it is going to cost to get the job done and save these boats. Now this is a situation that many old boats find themselves in, and seeing that these are both 98s, they're just over 20 years old. But that doesn't mean that it's time to turn the boat into the salvage yard. Just running a quick search to get some base numbers to work off of, if you wanted to just skip the fuel tank and buy one of these boats, if we look up a 98-23 Mako for sale and see what's available, here's a 1990-24-241 for $31,000. Here's a 79.23 for 8,900. So that's not too bad. Here's an 89.23 for 28.9. Here's an 89.23 for 65.5. An 88.23 for 25,000. An 88.231 for 32,000. Here's a 99.232 for 35,000. 96, 23 for 37, 5. 95, 23 for 50 grand. 99, 232 for 33,000. And for the Parker, this one's your closest to 15,000. Then this 88, 23 for 20,000. 2004, that's an 18 footer though. 1990, 23 for 23. So let's give it a number of about 20,000 to say $30,000. And that's when you find a pretty good deal to just buy another one of these boats. But again, seeing that we are doing fuel tanks in these boats, you'll want to be asking some questions and cautiously investigating the boat before you buy it. Or you might find yourself with this brand new to you used boat that is going to need to get the fuel tank replaced in it, significantly raising that initial price tag of 20 to 30 grand. There are two main factors that drive up the price of the tank replacement on a boat. Number one is going to be the cost of the tank. On average, tanks are roughly 10 bucks a gallon, but the prices of pretty much everything is going up right now, so this price is going to be locally determined based on if you have to have the tank made. So a 150 gallon tank is going to put you somewhere in the area of about 1500 bucks before taxes and again, depending on the availability of materials and what the cost of aluminum is currently going for. Or if you get lucky and have a more production line type of tank to replace, where you can find tank builders that are still in business, building the exact model of the tank that you are trying to replace, this isn't uncommon for really reputable boat brands like this Parker for example, the tank that goes in the Parker is such a common tank that there are tons of companies prefabbing these tanks, and you can get the exact model from the tag that is on the tank. Then call them and order your tank. This helps to bring the price down to a decent number, compared to the custom built tank, which is basically built by the gallon on the price from a welder. There are companies like RDS or the Welding World that make a lot of these tanks every year, so they are pretty common, but the exception to this is going to be the cost of shipping. Like here on Welding World, you're looking at $1,600 for the 143 gallon tank, plus another 700 just to ship the tank to you. And I don't think that that includes tax either, so you're really looking at a price of around 23 to say 2400 bucks just to purchase the tank. So we're going to use that general number there for the tank price being say $2,300 for the tank alone. So with the tank being the first big price point here, the next expensive portion to the project is going to be that labor charge. Depending on your area, what the hourly rate is, that is going to drive the price up, again, depending on the boat. When we look at both of these boats, they both have to have the console removed from the boat. This means that everything inside the console, the wiring, the cables, the hoses, and the tubing, and anything that is going from the console down through the deck will need to be unhooked and left with the boat so that the console can come out. Then once the console is out of the boat, there is one more massive decider here being what kind of access there is to get to the tank. With the Mako example here, there is an access panel in the deck of the boat that can be removed, giving us access to the tank compartment and we'll be able to reuse the access when it comes time to put it back in. 
based on what kind of shape the panel is in, of course. For this example, the deck on this boat was already soft and rotting out, so the panel had to be recored once it was out of the boat. But this is a completely different type of project from the Parker. The Mako needed to get a fiberglass person involved because the deck needed to be recorded, whereas the Parker doesn't have an access panel to get to the tank. So no matter what, someone has to get involved in order to do some fiberglass work here to get to the tank. The console still has to be removed just like in the Mako scenario, but now someone has to cut a hole in the deck in order to get access down to the fuel tank. And this can get a little tricky based on who is doing the cutting on the floor. Having someone that knows what they are doing in order to cut the hole out correctly and get us the correct access to the tank but still leaving the hole portion that was cut out of the floor in well enough shape that it can be reinstalled into the deck once the tank has been replaced is super important. So when we start looking into the cost for something like this, when you have to get someone involved to do some fiberglass repairs or cutting out the deck, that is generally going to raise our price up another two grand, depending on how bad it is. Obviously, if you're going to need to redo the entire floor of the boat, this is going to cost a lot more. But when we are just talking about the basic floor cutout or the recoring of a panel, the number is going to be real close to that $2,000 mark, which puts our total cost at a rough $4,300 for the tank and the fiberglass work. But we haven't discussed the labor in full yet. Before we dial that number in though, let's talk about some other materials that will need to be purchased with this project. Whenever we change out a fuel tank in a boat, it's pretty much a given that you are going to want to change out the fuel fill hose, the vent hose, and the fuel line from the pickup to the fuel water separator bracket. The tanks usually come with new fuel cinders and pickup tubes, so you don't have to worry about that. When it comes to the fuel fill hose, they usually come in pre-cut sections like 8, 10, or 12 feet. And they are usually 1.5 inch inside diameter hoses that are specifically made for fuel fillers. I would say to go with the Shields hose, it's a super reputable company and it's what's used in most boats. Now if you get it online, you can find them around 150 bucks. But if you get them from say a marina, they are generally around 220 or 230 bucks MSRP. Or like from West Marine here, that's 10 feet at 28.99 per foot, which is 290 bucks. Now when it comes to the fuel vent hose, these are usually 5 8 inch ID and they aren't as expensive. You're looking at around $50 or so for this hose and these can usually be purchased by the foot for however much you need. Then the fuel pickup hose will also not be as bad as the fuel fill hose, but this will also be determined by how much you are going to need, usually around seven to ten dollars per foot, so let's say that you need five feet, that's just another fifty bucks. Then about ten to twenty dollars in stainless steel hose clamps because we're going to need to double clamp everything. So in hoses and clamps, we're looking at roughly three hundred or so dollars more given that we don't need to change out the fittings that are on the fuel fill or the vent or the water separator bracket. Which brings our cost up to about $4,500 to $4,600 in the tank, the fiberglass, and the parts. So we're still under five grand for the project, but we haven't discussed the labor cost in detail just yet. Now when it comes to the labor, it can range pretty widely based on where you are located. If you live somewhere where you can still find shops or mechanics working for say 75 bucks an hour, then that will be way different than say where we are where shops are charging $165 an hour. So we'll break this down into an estimation of how long the project will take and you can then multiply that by whatever labor cost is for wherever you live. When it comes to derigging the console here and getting it removed, Generally, as long as we're not talking about having to move big objects like say a sea keeper or something like that and we're just unhooking the wiring, the hydraulic steering lines, moving some water tanks and some batteries, usually you can have the thing derigged and out of the boat in roughly four hours, including say a live well leaning post or just a straight up leaning post. Then once the deck comes up, you could be looking at another two to four hours of labor if the tank was super foamed into the boat and won't come out easily. Let's split the difference and call it a three hour job, even though sometimes you can catch a break and get them out in like 30 minutes. But this isn't a perfect science here, and that puts us at seven hours total so far. Then give it roughly two hours to put the tank in with the hoses. Let the fiberglass person do their thing and we'll be ready to reinstall the console and the rest of the boat and all its electronics. 
which is generally going to take a full day, depending on who is doing the work, with a full day being eight hours of reinstalling the console, sealing everything up, hooking up the hoses, the wires, batteries, testing out all the systems, purging the steering system, and then putting some fuel into the boat and testing it out to make sure nothing is missing or messed up. This brings our total project cost and time to about 17 hours of labor. Now if you're getting a hundred bucks an hour, then that puts you at another $1,700 without tax. Being in Florida at 7.5% would bring that up to $1,830. So when we add that to our other $4,600, that brings us to a total of a rough $6,430 for the entire project. But if you're looking at $165 per hour, now that is going to change our price pretty drastically bringing the new total to $2,800 before tax and $3,015 after tax, which would bring us from $6,400 to $7,615. Now if you start adding things to the project, which usually does happen, like steering cylinder end caps that start leaking, or through hole fittings, live well hoses, or other electrical connectors or wiring, that will change the price and it can change it super quickly. But for these examples here, let's call this general project of saving a 21 to a 23 foot boat that needs a fuel tank to anywhere from $6,000 to $8,000. Which is if you completely pay someone else to handle this entire project without you doing any kind of input at all, just footing the bill. Still, when we go back to talking about buying the same boat at 20 to 30 grand, spending less than 10,000 and having a great running boat again is well worth it in my book. Also, this puts it into perspective for you if you are looking at buying a used boat that is older than say 20 years. You better look closely at that fuel tank or you might find yourself on the verge of forking out another $8,000. Now don't forget to visit us at bornagainboating.com and join our academy program where we teach you all about these different systems that are in your boat and you can learn how to do all this labor here yourself and pick up your own project boat on the cheap and get the thing back on the water for a fraction of this cost here.